There's one thing that most success gurus will never tell you about when it comes to starting an online business. And if you don't watch today's video, I promise you, you're gonna find this out the hard way. So what's going on guys? It's Yaziah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I wanna give you the real deal about starting an online business. Now I know you've seen the YouTube ads, you've seen the guys driving the flashy cars, going on the great vacations, living in the nice houses, telling you about the online dream, right? How to be able to make money from anywhere in the world. I know you've seen things on Facebook, you've seen things on YouTube about all the different types of ways that people are making money. So now you're seeing all of these different characters talking about how they quit their job and they started a business and things took off. And the truth of the matter is, there are some people that have become very successful online. There are people that are real life killing it based upon having an internet business set up. And you got certain people that are making money on different platforms than others. You know, you got some guys that are making money selling a product on Amazon. You've got some people on YouTube that are making a fortune by selling a product or even making money from advertisements. But you know the number one platform that really got me hooked on starting an online business? Facebook. I wanted to make a killing through Facebook ads. So like anybody else, I was on Facebook one day and I was probably at work, not trying to pay attention to whatever was going on with the job. I already wanted to get the hell out. So here I am sitting at work and I'm just scrolling through my news feed and I come across an advertisement that's talking all about the benefits of using Facebook ads. And so I'm clicking on the advertisement. You know, I'm a little bit intrigued. They really got some good information that they're trying to share. And I started to find out all of this information that was really telling me about how Facebook ads was about to be the next big thing. Now, this had to be somewhere around 2013 when I first started my company. This was before Facebook ads had really took off. So I'm looking at the research. I'm taking the courses all in, right? I'm studying all the information that there is to know. And I'm finding out, okay, well, you know, Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world. And over a billion people are using Facebook every single day. So I'm like, man, if a billion people are on Facebook every single day, this is the place where I need to be putting my business out there on Front Street. This is where I need to be doing my promotion and having people come into my website to learn all about what it is that I have to offer, right? Surely if I make the right investment in getting going on Facebook, this is going to be the win for me. So sure enough, I started to learn all about it. I put money in to some of the best courses that were out on Facebook at that time. You know, I had spent thousands of dollars. I had found mentors that were successful when it came to Facebook ads. I was looking at YouTube tutorials. You know, I was trying to get connected with people that were working at Facebook until one day I started running Facebook ads myself. So, you know, when I first got going on these Facebook ads, I really didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was far from an expert and I was just living in the dream of what would it look like if one day I built my entire business from Facebook. So I'm getting going on these advertisements and I'm starting to get a lot of traction. And I'm like, man, you know what? This thing is real. People are coming to my Facebook fan page. People are asking me questions. I'm starting to set up client calls. This thing could take off. If this is the result that I'm getting, and this is just the start of me running my very first campaign, oh man, once I figure this thing out, <laughs> the sky's in the limit. So I started to get a little distracted after a while. You know, I think one of the detriments was I became so successful at the beginning of using Facebook ads in 2013 that I almost started to get bored with it. So I took some time off and I focused on my nine to five job. I went back to work and I was thinking all about, you know, 
do I really want to do this thing as a hobby on the side or do I want to go in all in over time? Right. So a few years pass by 2013 turns into 2014. I'm not running Facebook ads. 2014 turns into 2015 turns into 2016 until one day I decide to make the jump out of corporate America. And now I'm feeling comfortable and I'm saying to myself, well, you know what? If I ran a Facebook ad before and I was just playing with it back in 2013, surely that's going to be my claim to fame to get started with my next full-time business. You know, before it was just a side hobby, but now I felt like I had enough to make a real business out of it. So what did I do? I quit my job, right? Put in that two weeks notice. I was feeling good. And I've been blessed to be out of corporate America ever since. But when I made the exit out of corporate America, I started rebuilding my company from scratch. I was turning it into a full-time enterprise and I was about to launch a really big Facebook campaign. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had done so much more learning and made such a stronger investment. By now I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars learning all of what I need to know until one day I was about to launch a campaign on Facebook that I was sure was going to make me at least six figures. So I start the campaign. I get it going. I spent a lot of time taking really good photos. I put in all of the good copywriting, the good advertisements, really the type of information that would draw people in. I had something really powerful that I wanted to share. I had a program that I had been spending years working on. I had given up everything to go in pursuit of just chasing this one vision. And do you know what happened? The very next day after I started this first major Facebook ad, I woke up the following morning after day one of my Facebook campaign. Follow me now. Day one is going, it's not getting a whole lot of traction, right? But I'm thinking, you know what? That's regular, right? Most cases, success isn't built overnight. When a Facebook ad is running on the very first day, it takes a while for the system to really get going to kick things into high gear. So I say, you know what? The first day is nothing. The second day and beyond is when things are going to pick up and pick up and pick up. And do you know what happened when I woke up? That following day, I went to my laptop to check my email to see how things were looking for day two of my Facebook advertisements. And I got an email from Facebook saying that my Facebook ad account was disabled and that I would never be able to run an advertisement again from my Facebook fan page. When I tell you that I was completely devastated by what happened. I was completely devastated by what happened. <laughs> I literally built an entire business around Facebook ads, not knowing how easy it was to be removed from the Facebook ad system on a sheer technicality. Now I had been running a business for a number of years talking about how I had paid off over $90,000 in student loans and I was having a good marketing message, scot-free, never a problem until here it is now, I'm trying to start up a coaching program showing people how to be able to start a business and I just happened to put in a one-line statement about how I had paid off that debt and then lo and behold, uh-oh, you can't make any statement about how you paid off student loans on Facebook because there were so many student loan relief fraud companies that had already made a lot of money taking people's finances all from Facebook ads. So Facebook ads didn't want to hear nothing about student loan anything. Even if the program itself wasn't related to Facebook uh, or student loans, right? People wanted to just 
do all the way with that totally. I'm here. I am. I'm sitting up. I'm writing apology emails. I'm filing appeals. Please, Facebook, take me back. I'm going to be your best friend. I'm going to buy you candy. I'm going to take you all over the world. Please just don't ban me from doing a Facebook ad. And I'll never forget, I'm looking at that second email now. I'm hoping, I'm praying that they're going to understand my situation. And they said at the end of that email, Uzziah, this decision is final. And that taught me one critical lesson in business that I'll never forget. When you don't control the platform, somebody else controls you. I'm going to say that again. This is very important. When you don't control the platform, somebody else controls you. So while there may be people online that are making money via YouTube ads, they may be making money through selling and distributing on Amazon. If the platform changes, your success changes. When you don't control the platform, somebody else controls you. So that's the number one thing that I want you to think about in today's video. You got to start getting a handle on control, okay? So it's nothing wrong with you being on social media and you having all of these different channels. Obviously, you're watching me right now on YouTube, but... Your end all be all to running a successful business should not be whatever level of traction you're gaining on somebody else's platform because the minute that that platform goes down, then you go down. The minute that a uh, company like Facebook decides that your line of business is not something that they want advertised to all of the billions of people that are on Facebook, you're going to be dead in the water. And a lot of times you would never know it, even if you look at the fine print. Why is that? That sounds unfair. How is it, Uzziah, that all of these different penalties can happen, even if you've read the terms and the regulations? Because things always changed. See, when I started my company back in 2013, which was predicated on me having paid off all those student loans, Facebook hadn't yet put out terms or regulations that somebody telling a story about how they had paid off their student loan debt was ever a problem. So here I go now, taking the same information that I had from 2013, and now I'm bringing it into 2018, kind of like a poker game. Here it is, I put one chip on the table, and I make a small bet, and then that goes successful, and then on the ne very next bet, I bring in all of my chips to play what I think is going to be a winning hand not knowing that the regulations had changed. When you don't control the platform, somebody else controls you. So you could very well be making tens of thousands of dollars online. It happens all the time, but people never tell you about it because they don't want you to know the horror stories. They only want you to know the dream. Nobody's going to get on and be like, yeah, you know what? You could make $20,000 in a month on Amazon, but if Amazon's policy changes, which could happen all the time, then your business could be a part of the negative change that happened on that platform. So you literally could go from $20,000 to $0 overnight. Now, why am I saying this? Is this to say that you can never use Amazon? Is this to say that you can never use Facebook? Is this to say that you can never use Instagram or YouTube or Twitter or any other platform that's not in your control? No, absolutely not. Tons of people are using these platforms and they're leveraging them as a supplement to their business. You hear that? Supplement to their business, okay? What you need to really focus on is how do I create a platform that I can control? So whether that means you have a website, 
that you want to direct your uh, prospects to after they looked at your YouTube channel, whether that means that you want to get uh, contact information from your prospects and get them into an email list, you need a platform that you can control. Let's take Black Men's Career, for example. You're watching this video right now, and I appreciate and love you because of that. Hopefully you've subscribed. But if for any reason, at any point in time along the way, one of the powers that be at YouTube says, you know what? Because of the fact that this guy keeps talking about this black men's career stuff, black men's this, black men's that, somebody might decide that they don't like that type of content. Somebody in the everyday walk of life could be hating on me and say, how do we get this channel taken down? And guess what? When or if, hopefully God forbid it happens, but if that were to happen, and I haven't done my due diligence to keep in contact with you beyond the confines of YouTube, shame on me, because I already know how the game goes. That's the reason why I give you a link behind every video that I do so in the event that Black Men's Career Channel, for whatever reason, is no longer socially accepted by the powers that be in America, as I try to make it as a black man, it's okay because I'm bringing you into another platform that I can control. If I don't control the platform, it doesn't matter if I have 100 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, even a million subscribers. If my channel goes down, then I go down and I have no way of being able to get in contact with you. When you don't control the platform, the platform will control you. And you're putting your fate in somebody else's hand if your only moneymaker comes from promoting your product or service on a platform that you don't control. You have to work on building a platform that you have some power and independence on so that way your Income isn't so unpredictable, okay? That's pretty dangerous. I've been burnt. I know what it's like. I have know a lot of people in the online world that know what it's like. All of us will tell you the exact same thing, okay? So control is key. The third and final point that I really want you to focus on as you create this platform that you can control is how to almost set up a business like this, okay? Remember, you don't wanna put all of your eggs in one basket. You wanna be able to start accruing income in a number of ways, okay? So I want you to think about your business setup and your structuring like this, okay? So here it is now, you need to have this super hub, okay? So let's say your primary. Okay, now your primary could be, again, something like your website, your email list, whatever method that you're going to use to be able to bring your traffic back to your domain so that way you can control what happens to your following, right? You could still be on other platforms, but it should kind of go like this, okay? So you might have a platform here, you might have a platform there, you might have a platform there, and maybe let's say, you know, this is Facebook, this is Instagram, this is YouTube, and that's all good, right? And you're starting to create some buzz on all of these respective platforms, but never, ever settle only for the platform. You should always be bringing the people from that platform back to a primary hub that you can control. So if you like my Facebook page, go to the website. If you like me on Instagram, click the link in the bio so that way I can work with you day by day. If you get your account disabled, how are you gonna be able to reach out to all of your followers and all of your fans? There's nothing more painful than having a strong following 
and having to start all over from scratch because you did not take heed to today's lesson. This happens all the time. It's totally out of your control. In many cases, it's not anything that's your fault. The platforms just always changes. I mean, technology is always changing. That's the flavor of the world that we live in today. So you can never get too comfortable on any one platform doing any one thing because society is always changing, okay? Change is inevitable. So what I want you to do is, I want you to start first mapping out your business based around this type of marketing structure. In your marketing plan, it's nothing wrong with you being involved on these different platforms, but make sure that it goes back to a platform that you can control. See, even though I might have this black men's career channel that currently has a thousand subscribers, I'm not naive to thinking that this thousand subscribers is just going to be the top of the hill for me. I'm going to tell you that if you really want to be able to work with me close in the event that something happens on YouTube or anywhere else, click the link in the description below. Because if my channel goes down, not only are you going to be upset because you're not going to be able to access these videos, I'm going to be upset because I'm going to have no way to get in touch with you. Okay. As people come to your YouTube channels, you don't know who's watching. You don't know when they're watching. You don't know what's going on. So how will you be able to really keep them updated and aware of things um, as things change? I've had mentors in the past that I would be watching on different social media platforms. And then sure enough, something might happen where they do an advertisement being experts of the platform. And even they themselves have gotten banned or this, their account disabled on a strength of a technicality. And you know what they were wise enough to do to be able to follow up with me even after they got off the platform, they knew how to be able to get me into their email list so that way I could have a continued line of communication. Hey man, sorry that you're off this platform, but glad we're able to still keep in touch so that way we're still able to keep that mentor-mentee relationship going. If you watch this video and you're trying to get mentorship from me, but yet you haven't clicked the link below, after I'm telling you there's a good chance that there could come a day where this channel could be taken down, shame on you, right? That's the number one secret that most success gurus are not willing to tell you about starting an online business, okay? So make sure that you subscribe. <laughs> as long as I'm on YouTube, let's keep the train rolling. But don't just leave it at your YouTube subscription. If you want to figure out how to be able to make the transition out of your nine to five job, start your business and build it the proper way, rather than being like a lot of business owners that are building their entire house on the sand of a social media platform that they can't control and they get swept away. You should be clicking the link below to get into the Empire Builder. I'm going to show you what many of the most successful people do to properly structure um, their business investments and make things diverse enough to not keep all of their eggs in one basket. So even if one platform goes down, it's all good because the money is still coming in. If you want to know how to be able to do that in your own life so that you could be one of the people that's able to travel the world while making money, while not being stuck and tied down to a nine to five job, click the link below. All right. Also, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about today's video. If you don't control the platform, the platform will control you. All right. See you guys on the next video. Take care.